So welcome to our webinar on channel management, online travel agents and inventory. Um, at the end of this session, there will be an option to give us your feedback. So we'd love to hear what you think, um, but let's get started. <laughs> So channels. Channels are a great way to market your property on a whole variety of places online. We want as many opportunities for our guests to make bookings with us as possible. Now, with NewBook, we do have direct connections with some of the larger channels. And that just means that all of your rates and availability that you already have in NewBook, NewBook can send that directly to that online travel agent so that those guests can make bookings on those websites as well. And then those bookings can drop straight back into new book. Super quick, super easy, and great for everybody. Now, for some of our, um, we also have the option of channel managers. Now, channel managers um, basically act as a bit of a middleman. So new book, once again, sends all of your rates and availability to the channel manager and then the channel manager sends it to your OTA. So once again, this can help you, uh, I suppose, open you up to a variety of other platforms that we may not necessarily have a direct connection with. So really cool to have a look into those. Um, some of those channel managers are things like SiteMinder or Star, whereas we also have those direct connections, lots of direct connections, uh, with things like Airbnb and Booking.com or for some of our US clients, um, things like uh, Spot Tonight, uh, The Dirt and Book Outdoors. So really cool um, if you are interested in connecting with those to obviously have a bit of a look. So obviously if you are interested, where do we go if we want to be able to get that connection with New Book? Firstly, with our little knowledge base article at the top here, as you all know, if I want to know something more about NewBook and what it can do, I can type up here and I can go to how to connect to my channels. Um, within that knowledge base article, there is basically the first step that says we can just simply go to our search menu, type in our third party booking channels. Great first step. Now this is going to give us a list of all our different third party channels that we connect with. If you scroll down the bottom, you can see we have lots and lots of these. Um, so really cool, really handy. Um, and you can use that search button if there's a particular one that you wanna see if we connect to. Now with these, if because they are all a little bit different in the way they want to connect with us, um, you can just simply jump into the channel that you're interested in. So for instance, we'll look at Agoda and all of these easy steps on how to get that connection will appear up the top here. You can click onto this link and it will just tell you, hey, what's step one? For Agoda, it's just simply reaching out to your Agoda account manager and asking for them to start or establish that connection with NewBook. So once again, have a look through that third party booking channel page, see what ones are going to benefit your business, what ones your guests are going to potentially be looking at, and then jump on in here to see if we connect and how you can do that connection. If we jump on back, once you do have that connection established, this is where you can finalize that connection. So I'm just going to jump back into one that I've prepared earlier, <laughs> Speedia. Similar kind of setup. Um, and I'm just going to run you through how we finalise that. Once again, lots of knowledge base articles that run you through it, and you do have our support team at any time to have a bit of a chat too. If you do have any questions as we do move through this scenario, please don't forget we have our lovely Zoe as scribe, uh, who's going to be popping in lots of tips and tricks as we go along. Or if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. She'll be able to respond in that chat. Cool. So for Expedia, if we did get that initial connection, we can just simply jump on down here, set in that our channel name is obviously Expedia. Uh, we can link the travel agent and we'll go into that a little bit more because that's very important. We can add in that booking source that is Expedia. 
And if for any reason, booking source isn't appearing there, you can actually just add in as many booking sources by just simply adding in that booking source and typing in what that name is. Uh, we also have this here called a rate multiplier. So obviously, once again, we were mentioning that Newbook is sending those rates across to that online travel agent. Now, because obviously these online travel agents generally charge a commission for those bookings, some of our clients like to automatically increase the price when it gets pushed across to that channel. So basically from here, if we know that um, this particular Expedia always charges us 10% commission. We don't want to miss out on that revenue. Um, we can then go into our rate multiplier section. And instead of leaving it as one, we can pop in 1.1, which will then boost that price automatically by that 10%. So if our rate is $100 in new book, if anyone was to make a booking, $100. When it goes to Expedia, it's going to be $110. So quick and easy for all of the different categories that you're feeding across. You don't have to do this. It's just an option and a quick and easy one at that. When you are ready to then enable that connection, you can click the enabled button. And down the bottom here, as you can see, Expedia is telling me what categories I have on Expedia's side. Now, I might have named them exactly the same as I've named them within Newbook, but I may not have. So Expedia is just simply telling me that on their website, they're advertising a basic studio with a standard price. I'm then going to tell Expedia that this is related within Newbook to my category of my hotel suite. And I want that standard pricing um, to be feeding across. So that standard Newbook rate I have is going to go to Expedia to be my standard rate for the basic studio. That's the same for me. Exactly the same down here for our multiple bedrooms. I have two different standard rates that I'm feeding across for my tropical family villa. And I've just used my drop down here to pull through from the rate types within new book to select that yes, I do want my standard and my last minute to feed across. So all of that will feed through nicely and Expedia will know what it's related to. So nice and easy. Any questions, feel free to chat pop in the chat for Zoe. Now, this bit here is probably one of the more important bits when you are setting up or finalizing that connection. So we're just going to jump on into that travel agent. I just want to run you through a few of these because very important. So if I go into edit, um, this is where I set up that obviously Expedia is acting like a travel agent for me. It's selling my property on its website. Down here, I can pop in that every time a booking is a place through Expedia and through that connection, I want it to default to the booking source of Expedia. When I am setting up that connection with Expedia, if I know what that commission is, and generally they will tell you, um, or I will then need to find out, um, I can then just simply add it into this section down the bottom. That every time a booking is made through Expedia, I know it's going to be 15% of that as that commission amount. I can then add in that inventory item so that when that commission is um, generated, um, I do know whereabouts in my reporting and my jail codes and accounts where that is going to be sitting. So nice and easy to add in there. This bit is the most important. I really want you to follow this one. And if you do have any questions, um, once again, reach out to Zoe. This section here is related to the charge for the booking. So bill two, where is our bill for the accommodation or the stay cost going to appear? In which client account? This section here is where our credit for our commission is going to raise as well. So once again, when you were setting up this connection with say Expedia, they would let you know that, hey, uh, they're going to take all of the money for the entire booking uh, from the guest when they make a booking on Expedia. 
So we know we're not going to be charging the guest any more money because they've technically already paid. We're going to be charging Expedia or that, um, to get that money for the booking. That means that we want the charge. So for instance, that $100 charge, we want to charge our travel agent. We want that charge to appear in the travel agent client account so that we know that's where we're getting that money from for that particular charge. Now with our commission, if we know that obviously, once again, that um, 10 or that 15% commission, if we know that obviously we're not going to be giving um, or charging Expedia that full $100 because they're going to take that $10 or $15 out of that booking, out of that for their commission, we can then make nice and clear that that commission uh, will raise that credit. So on our client account, we can go, okay, well, that booking was placed, the guest paid everything to Expedia, that $100 charge for that stay cost will appear on our travel agent client account minus our 10 or 15% commission that we aren't obviously charging them for because they're going to keep that. Whereas alternatively, if we know that the guest hasn't paid a cent uh, and that we're going to be responsible for taking that money and then paying out our travel agent, we would then have it that our charge is going to appear on our booking client account to get from our guest when they arrive. But then that commission, um, oh, we obviously um, will need to, uh, oops, sorry, wrong way around there. Uh, we will need to then pay them out, that travel agent. So because we're getting the full $100 from the guest, we need to remember to give that percentage of that commission to our travel agent. So in this scenario, on our booking client account, we're getting $100 from our guest. And we're going to then see on our travel, uh, travel agent client account that there is a $10 or $15 credit sitting there for us to refund back to our travel agent because they haven't been paid yet. So a few different uh, ways that you can organize that based on what they have organized with you. Also a little setting down the bottom where you can convert that net to gross in regards to our commission. So whether they're saying it's $100 plus that $15 commission or whether that 15 is part of that $100. So nice, easy setting there to play with. Also, if you do have any restricted rates that are only, reply, or only uh, restricted to that particular OTA, uh, you can um, select that here as well. Scrolling on down, if you want to, you can add their address um, for that online travel agent if you would like to, or even add in any contact details. Completely up to you, um, but feel free if you would like to. Let's jump on back. Cool. Um, and I'm just going to jump back to our channel. Now, when we have got our channel, um, we are going, ooh, actually, I'll jump back into this way instead. Travel agent. So when we've created that travel agent, that client account. Um, oh, actually, one extra really cool thing on there with Expedia. Um, Expedia does something extra cool where it has something called Hotel Collect versus Expedia Collect. And with this particular channel, it will actually automatically update um, these particular settings based on how that guest is booked. So it can actually have that functionality to switch across. So cool fun fact on that side. <laughs> um, when we do have our travel agent, as I was mentioning, there will be that travel agent client account. So where all our charges and our credits for those commissions will sit. Now down the bottom here, um, if I was having a bit of a look through this client account, and I did have lots of charges. So once again, using the example that I'm billing my travel agent less any commissions that obviously I am not needing to charge them for, they're keeping that little bit amount. I can then select all of my charges and pop in that invoice to invoice out to them. So that's nice and clear um, that it was for booking for Zoe Smith for these particular dates if they do need those invoices to obviously pay you out. In the other way, if you do have any travel agents where 
uh, your guests are paying and you need to pay that travel agent. It is really important to come in here to see all of these credits and these commissions um, and jump on in, in here to then show that you have paid out your travel agent. So effectively in our client account, we have all these credits from all of these different bookings. We're refunding our travel agent. We're actually giving that money back to um, Expedia. We're paying them out. So very important you are doing this. So you do keep track of uh, obviously where you're at with that travel agent, whether they owe you money uh, or whether you do need to um, pay them that uh, commission. Cool. Um, perfect. So as I was mentioning there before, all of these rates are feeding across. And where it's really important, uh, if you do notice on any of those that the rate doesn't seem to be quite what you're, you thought you had popped in, or you need to just double check once you've established that connection, you can jump into your rates chart. Now with our rates chart, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. So obviously, if you've seen this page before, we can see all our different categories and our date ranges up the top and the price of how much those different categories would be on those different rate types. I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom because there's a few different settings here that help when you are specifically looking at those online travel agents. For instance, down the bottom, I can see that all of the rates I'm looking at at the top are just my base rates. So when I sell at the property, now generally this could be exactly what you're selling on your channel, uh, but not necessarily. Now, if I do jump into here and look at Expedia, oh, actually, I already have a saved view for this. Um, so I'll click on into that for a sec. Um, but also rate multipliers. So if I jump into Expedia, I can see that with my base rates, I have a super secret deal and a standard for my tropical uh, and also a super secret and standard for my hotel suite that's available for my guests when they're booking with me. Now, Expedia, I also have these two properties available to be booked online, um, but I can see I'm only pushing through my standard pricings for these two particular suites. So nice and easy to view. I can also see that because I've got that rate multiplier that I set up previously, that where if they book with me direct, my standard is $100. On Expedia, my standard is $110. So once again, really clear of what exactly I would see um, if, um, or what I should be seeing on Expedia. Um, down the bottom there as well, uh, you can, uh, I suppose, see that occupancy and adjust those sites available option. So you can see that Expedia are able to see that there's two sites available um, for that 13th. So they can see that for two, uh, or basically there's two lots of availability for our guests if they wanted to book for the 13th and that pricing would be 220. So have a little look at those settings down the bottom. And once again, when you do set up these channels, always jump on in here and play around to check um, what is meant to be feeding through and what you have set up. Now, if you do, as we were saying with rate multiplier, it is just pushing things up by a set percentage for everything. But maybe you don't want your uh, guests to be able to book over Christmas on your channels or uh, things are getting really busy and you want to bump up your pricing, but just for your, uh, your different channels, not for your direct bookings. This is where you can actually use a rate override onto that one here. If you've been to rate overrides, we pop in the dates that we want to change, the categories that we want to change and any rate types. But we also have the option of the booking channel we want to affect. So on the rates chart we were just looking at, we saw the breakdown of our base rates and we saw the breakdown of our Expedia rates. So if we didn't want to boost up our base, so what our, we sell at our property, just Expedia, we want Expedia to be a little bit different. We can actually just select 
Expedia or all of our other channels here, but not our base. Now, something really important that I do want to make really clear. If we do select base rates and we have no other overrides for those dates, that will feed through beautifully to all of our channels automatically. However, if we do make a change and we say, okay, Expedia, we want to stop sell it for the 13th of July. If we then go back um, and create a uh, increase, say, for our base rates for the 13th of July, obviously New Book knows that we've broken that connection. Expedia is no longer listening to what we have set up on our base. We've literally stopped sold it. We've not got it going anywhere. So that means when we are making that change on that base, Expedia is not going to update because it already knows that it's got something different to the norm. So just make sure when you are making those rate overrides that you are checking your work after you've done it or even just double checking if there is already an override in place before you go ahead and do this. And if that's the case, perfect. You can do and update your base rates and all of your Expedia rates and make sure it is definitely uh, pulling across that change. And once again, those changes could be things like stop sell to not be available anymore or increasing that price by however much as you might like. So once again, all of those changes would then feed through back to our rates chart. So 10%, we're just going to affect our Expedia rates and save. And I think I did an extra little thing there, so don't mind that. <laughs> cool. Um, perfect. So obviously we can see all the availability showing on our occupancy here that is feeding across to our channel. So let's jump into our booking chart. So because of how our different channels read the information we feed through, Expedia, if anyone wants to book for our tropical family villa, Expedia will see, awesome, we have uh, maybe one night free here and we have one night free here. It's not going to distinguish that these are on two different sites because it actually does want you to have that option of literally just dragging and dropping Bob the Builder's booking down so you don't miss out on that booking. So just keep in mind that if you do see a booking drop in at the very, very top site that looks like a conflicting booking, it's just simply because your, your channel has noticed you do actually have that availability, as we can see here for a two night booking, but that you just need to play a little bit of Tetris to move those bookings around to accommodate. Now, if you are concerned about that and you do get quite busy, uh, you do have the option to do what's called sites withheld. So that kind of reduces any potential conflicting bookings where you may not be able to move Bob the Builder. How you can do that is jumping into your category, scrolling down to our third party booking channels section. And that's where you can tell New Book that awesome, you want to withhold two of those sites for our tropical family villa when it goes to that third party booking channel. We know there are four different tropical family villas, meaning if all four of them are available, we're only going to send that two are actually free. Same thing, if there are only two sites available in that tropical family villa, whichever they might be, we're going to then minus those two, meaning there's no availability. So have a little play around with that setting of getting that sweet spot. So you are still getting all those bookings in, but still dealing with where you can't sometimes play that bit of Tetris on your bookings chart and optimize that. Cool. Um, within, doo -doo -doo, oh, um, yes, we went through. While we are on that edit category, we did go through the rates and sending through the pricing and obviously availability, um, but we also can feed through in our third party channels section, additional uh, inventory. So things like our cleaning fees or our bonds, you can jump into our billing setup tab on the category. And this is where you can add in those extra items. So for instance, I've got bond that if they're booking my, uh, my tropical family villa, 
I know I want there to be an additional bond on top of that stay cost to increase. When I click into this inventory item or I create it, I'm literally just grabbing my inventory item, which will therefore fill in my GL account and sub client account there as well. Based on how you've set up that inventory item, it will just default to whether this is increasing um, and all of these nice little settings. But down the bottom where it is really important is how it affects your channels. So whether it's new book online or any of our third party channels there, uh, we can pick and choose uh, how that inventory item will be applied. So for instance, Expedia, if I was to tick this box, I'm making it nice and clear that when that booking is placed through Expedia, Newbook will automatically add that inventory item of my bond. So that will drop in with the additional charge that I can then get from my guests when they arrive. For some channels, it is just a one-way connection, meaning that uh, we will add this once the booking's been placed. But some of our channels do allow for what's called a two-way connection. Meaning if we were to feed this through this bond to Airbnb or these cleaning fees, uh, we can choose to then map um, that this particular inventory item is shown on Airbnb's side. So they will be able to see that bond, that uh, cleaning fee um, on a, uh, in addition to the rate. So very clear, very transparent when your guests are making that booking. And that will also apply to the booking and create that additional charge when it drops into new book. So just keep in mind how some of these channels are a little bit different um, and uh, obviously uh, make it nice and transparent to your guests. And these make it nice and handy as well to make it look like your accommodation is a little bit cheaper than what it is because technically those cleaning fees and those bonds are in addition to that and um, we don't want it to seem more expensive than what it actually is. Um, but yes, make sure to tick those boxes or it will not apply. <laughs> um, once again, there is a great knowledge base article that runs you through how to add those in by literally typing in how to apply a cleaning fee. Um, so have a little look at that if that's something you need to set up. When those bookings obviously drop in, let's jump into, ooh, actually, let's just create a brand new one there. And book it. So when a booking does drop in from one of those booking sources, as we saw before when we were setting it up, it will default to the source um, that you have selected. So perfect, if it's from Expedia, we can see it's from Expedia. And this is really great for a whole heap of reports to track where your bookings are coming through from. So for instance, your booking placed report, you can then jump on in there and see how many of these channels are giving you these bookings that are dropping into your system. Is it worth creating additional rate types or extra marketing towards those? Or is it not really any benefit? If that number is quite low, maybe look at other channels instead that are going to be more suited for what your guests are looking for. So really great to look at those different reports. Uh, but when those bookings do drop in through that um, online travel agent, it will also update the travel agent itself in here. So for instance, if it was a booking through Expedia, we would see Expedia. It would also have that reference. So as you may know, uh, Expedia, Booking.com, they all have their own kind of booking ID that's different to the one that Newbook has in our system. This will be recorded against this booking, so it's always easy to search for uh, and to find. Uh, and it also means that if a booking does drop in and that guest makes any changes online, uh, whether it might be modifying that booking uh, or cancelling that booking, Newbook will then get that message from the channel know that it's related to this particular booking and make the appropriate changes. This is why don't uh, obviously ever remove this if it has booked in through from a channel. Um, but it also does mean that when guests do want to cancel a booking or modify a booking, you can simply just let them know they can reach out to the, the OTA that they had originally booked with to make those changes. Because if they do cancel with you directly, Obviously, that channel doesn't know that booking is cancelled. They're still going to charge you for that commission because they still think that booking went through. So make sure to just simply let your guests know, fantastic, they booked that way, 
they can reach out to um, however they booked to make that update. And that will automatically feed through in your system. So every time those bookings drop in, um, even I think with our modifications, you should get that notification um, of fantastic. Um, that booking has been placed. So you can review it if you would like to make sure that everything is looking fantastic, at least at the very beginning, to make sure you have set up those travel agent settings correctly and exactly as intended. Um, so once again, yes, if they do cancel, make sure they reach out to that channel. Um, do, 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 do. I think we've got everything in that section there. Um, ooh. If you do make any changes or when you are um, potentially setting up that travel agent and you realize you made a mistake um, and maybe the way that it's pulling through is a little bit different, you can just simply come back to that travel agent and refresh that connection by literally clicking the little rubbish bin and adding it back in as I just did there. And then just reconfirming that, yes, that price is commissionable. That will refresh any changes. So don't worry if you aren't quite sure setting it up. Obviously, do reach out to our support team if you aren't quite sure. But if you um, do go for it, set everything up and still have some questions, it doesn't seem quite right, reach out to us or even just make those applicable changes and refresh that connection so it's nice and uh, dropped in correctly. Oh, uh, we're going pretty well with time there. Um, so I might actually run through. Now, this is a little bit more on the technical side. So if you don't get it, that's fine. Um, but just obviously, if you do notice um, that something doesn't seem quite right uh, or the pricing doesn't seem to be updating, uh, obviously, you'll reach out to our support team after you've had a little bit of a look in the system. Now, what we generally look at you do have access to as well. We want it nice and transparent of that conversation between the both of us. So if you would like to, you can actually jump on in to what's called the channel manager messages. Now, these little messages um, basically is our conversation with those different channels. If we notice something doesn't seem quite right, uh, we can review these little buttons in here to see exactly what Newbook has sent to that channel. And as you can see here, nice little success messages. So if everything's looking beautiful and successful, everything's feeding through nicely. If for any reason um, there is some, uh, some of our channels do have requirements that when we send through that data, they need to have, say, uh, particular channel description, um, character limits, um, or, or something like that, um, that can make sure that if that restriction hasn't been met, it hasn't been a success, we can see exactly what is causing that error and obviously get straight into rectifying that. But if we do need to, or we have made a change and we want to push uh, or re-push and refresh that data, we can also jump into this section up the top. And this just gives it basically a little bit of a kick. We're just resending that availability and rates um, again. Now, Newbook's doing this all the time. Depending on the channel, it will either, Newbook will push it to and basically send an email for um, to layman's terms. Uh, some of those channels will actually pull that data out of Newbook. So uh, feel free to do that extra bit of a push if it does seem to be taking a little longer um, or it doesn't seem quite right. And if you've read all those settings and obviously reach out to us if you do um, just require a bit of more clarification on that um, so we can see exactly what's sending through and make sure those settings are in place correctly. Cool. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, then I think that we may have gone through everything that I went, wanted to touch base with you, um, which is fantastic. Um, if you do have any questions now, I do urge you to reach out to Zoe in the chat uh, to see if she can quickly pop in those, um, that little bit of extra information um, and, and within there. 
Uh, if you do want to, once again, re-listen to this, uh, it will be stored on our YouTube page online. So please feel free to forward it to your staff or even just jump on into it to have a listen to it yourself later if it was a lot of information there for you. With those, all of those channels, please don't hesitate to reach out to our support team if you would like assistance or you do have any questions regarding getting those connections up and running. Our team are more than happy to help uh, and walk you through um, or get help you with any areas that you might get stuck. Um, and please stick around if you do have any uh, or would you like to give us some feedback of obviously other webinars that you might be interested in learning a little bit more about New Book. Uh, or just giving me some feedback on how we went today. I'm just going to quickly jump into our chat just to see if there's anything else in particular. Lots of great questions in there, guys. Really impressed. You can see everyone's brains were on coffee today, so we're all nice and engaged, which is fantastic to see. Lovely. Awesome, then I think we're all good. Thank you once again so much for joining us. Um, I'll pop um, or pop that down so that you can uh, obviously um, pop in that survey response. We'd really appreciate that feedback. Bye for now, everyone. Chat soon.